Good evening, sports fans. Crowbat for the win of the Tokyo Minorities here today with the GBA Week 5. This is going to be a fun game for sure because we are going against Necrostevo. His link will be in the description below. Alright, i got to be frank with you guys. we got to win. Alright, I don't know what we've been doing. We, we haven't had the best luck. We haven't always made the best plays. We, we gotta start putting something together though, we gotta forget about it. We gotta do this. We have to play for ourselves and for you guys. I want this victory today more than anything. So, Necrostevo's team consists of Xerneas, Landorus TZ, Tentacruel, Hydreigon, Mega Charizard X, Slurpuff, Fortress, Manchow, Alakazam, Rotomo, and Barbarical. Our first mod for the week is Gengar. Which is going to be Life Orb, Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Dazzling Gleam, and Taunt. Taunt is basically for Latch Ditch to stop Charizard X from setting up or setting, stopping Slurpuff way up, something like that. Other moves are self-explanatory. Now we go to Choice Specs Palkia, okay? So we have Spatial Run, Surf, Ice Beam, and Hydro Pump in case we desperately need the extra power late game for whatever emergency reason. But basically, Imagine locking ourselves in a surf in this game, take away Tentacruel, and oh my gosh, it just goes wild. Alright, we got Genesect, Choice Scarf, U-Turn, Iron Head, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, it's physically based Scarf primarily because we want to hit Circuitry, and we want U-Turn in this game to hit as hard as possible. So that generally just looks pretty good, U-Turn Spam, what prevents us from U-Turn Spamming? Basically just the existence of Charizard X, and we can switch into something on it, and we actually have some options for that. We've got Silvali Fairy! With Thunder Wave, Parting Shot, Defog, and Multi Attack. This is a really cool one because Thunder Wave is going to stop Charizard X. Could stop Z Barbarical. Could stop Xerneas. We have we have a lot of options here regarding this Savali. Just Parting Shot and stuff is fantastic if we can use it. All right, we got Mega Alakazam with Psychic, Dazzling Gleam, Future Sight, and Protect. Future Sight is so that if he thinks he can be cheeky and switch in Hydreigon on my Alakazam, if it's like Scarf Hydreigon and wants to make a prediction, we still get that move off and a couple turns later, we still get Future Sight as long as Hydreigon's not still in the field. Alright, our final one is a Mega Charizard X Lure, a Haban, Berry, Como Out, Flash Cannon, Clanging Scales, Autonomize, and Stealth Rock. So this one is basically for Mega Charizard X entirely. It's a little bit of a lure for Hydreigon, I guess, now, if he doesn't end up bringing Mega Charizard X. That would be amazing. Now, I am expecting a Mega Charizard X heavily in this game, and a Xerneas, of course, and a Lando T. And I actually kind of expect Tentacruel because it deals with Palkia Whale. I think Slurpuff looks pretty good. Fortress is alright. Uh, I think, you know, those are kind of the mons I'm expecting to see in this game. Now, he's going to blow some of that completely out of the water. I'm, I'm telling you. So you are going to see the crazy team that he brought. The man brought a Barbarical instead of a Charizard X. I mean, he basically brought the mons that I expected, more or less. Also, Hydreigon, I probably forgot to mention it earlier, but Hydreigon is pretty obvious, too. Uh, but he didn't bring Mega Charizard X. What is this? This is a free Genesect lead, that's what it is. He leads with the Barbarical, so it's pretty obvious. He's trying to set up turn one. Now, I'm impressed that he has that much guts. I'm going to U-turn. I wish I kind of had an energy ball, obviously, for this scenario, but I never would have imagined him leading with a Barbarical in a game where I have Palkia. Hello? <laughs> Alright, he Shell Smashes. That's fine. I go to my physically defensive Silvali Fairy. He also doesn't have Mian Chow, so this, is, this thing is not needed too much. We do live a Poison Jab. Which is fantastic. We're going to be able to get the Thunder Wave off. Knowing our luck this season, I am happy we hit a Thunder Wave. That might be the greatest thing that happened to me today. Well, he still outspeeds us, but that also means now Mega Alakazam and other things on this team can now outspeed. And pretty much KO. Which is fantastic. Alright, Mega Alakazam is here reacting to Keystone. And Barbarical's Reign of Terror is about to end. Because Psychic... Because this thing is so powerful, we get a tough Claws Mega Alakazam. Look at those intimidating three claws on its hands. Psychic Chaos. Mega Alakazam is putting in work already. He goes into Hydro Gun, which screams from the highest of mountains that he must be Scarf. So I'm going to try to scout that out a little bit. I'm going to go for a Protect. 
So he goes for Crunch, which is indicating he is either mixed or he is just plain Scarf. Now if he's not Roselli Berry, Dazzling Gleam KOs. If he's Scarf, obviously I die. So I don't like either of those options. I'm gonna go to Hydra, I go to my Como L. I'm gonna predict a switch here, thinking he might be Scarf. And he goes for a Draco Meteor. I'm like, Como, oh, what are you doing, man? So he's not Scarf. We live because of the Haban Berry, but because there's no Zardex, this mod is not that useful to me. So at the end of the day, it's really not a huge deal. I'm okay losing this thing right now. I feel confident that I can actually win this game, potentially, with just the remaining four pieces. Unfortunately, he didn't switch that time either. He actually missed a Draco Meteor. So finally, we get an opponent who misses a move at a time when it really does not matter much, so that's funny. Uh, that extra flash cannon damage really didn't do anything or help us at all, but I couldn't let him get Slurpuff in there for free to get a free sticky web up. We could not have that happen, especially with the uh, Silvali with Defog gone. That was why. I just had to spam it. He, or if he went to Xerneas, at least it would have done some damage, but that was the right call for sure. I'm going to go into my Genesec and U-turn on the Tentacruel, so now free switch to this thing, which is amazing. This Alakazam, Mega Alakazam. Literally, it's a free future sight. If he thinks he can go to Hydreigon, it's not a problem in the slightest, because now I know he is not the Scarf Hydreigon. Dazzling Gleam, unless he's Roselli Berry, KOs, and even if he's Roselli Berry, I think he KOs most of the time from that range, and we get a solid KO out of Mega Alakazam, and this thing has a future sight. So, I said to myself in the pregame, Fortress, Palkia comes in 100% of the time. Fortress literally cannot touch Palkia. The best it can do is Volt Switch out into a better matchup. If he sets up rocks, I don't care. My remaining four Mons don't really care that much. He takes Future Sight, which is fantastic. That is a resisted Future Sight, and look how much damage that does. Now we get a free Spec Surf off. Nothing on this team wants to take a Specs Surf. Even this Tentacruel is not going to want to take it. This Palkia is that strong, where from that range, it basically is going to be a very close to a two-hit KO. I'm just going to stay in. What can this Tentacruel do? It can't hit me hard at all. It's going to do a little over 25% Sludge Wave. It could Scald Burn me. I don't care. He knocks off. That's fine. Really? That's actually literally okay with me. Now I just can go for Spatial Rend and freely KO this thing. That's actually really... That actually helped me a little bit. So I got the raw power when I needed it, and now it's gone. So that's fine. I don't really need it now. Now, Xerneas is here. I do not want him setting up Calm Minds. I do not want him setting up subs. I'm just going to go for the Surf. I'm going to just let this thing not set up. Because Genesect cleans this, can clean the team if, if uh, things go right. and Or Gengar could too, potentially. But I, I'm okay letting Palkia go down. So Palkia is going to stand its ground. And going to break this thing sub. No need. We're going to wait for a Moon Blast. We don't get it. He sets up a Calm Mind. Why is he setting up Calm Minds, man? I don't know. It's kind of interesting. So this Xerneas is at 40-ish percent. It's at 40-ish percent. And the Surf is obviously going to do less now. He might think I only have Surf. This move makes it very close. Sets up another Calm Mind. This is a moment where I was thinking about Hydro Pumping because after Leftovers, he is at just about 25%. It was on the border. I did not want to take a chance on Hydro Pump missing and then he gets a free sub up and then this game becomes closer than it needs to, or maybe there's a chance I might lose it. Don't want to play that game. So I just go for the safe surf to prevent him from ever setting up a sub. And Palkia could have probably actually got four KOs there. Probably would have swept the game. If I went for Hydro Pump and, and hit and it KO and it if and it hit. And it would have probably KO'd in all likelihood. But if it missed and he set up a sub, I would have been screwed. So did not I'm okay taking a one less differential game in exchange for a guaranteed, as you're about to see, we go to Janice Hector U-turn, guaranteed win! Yes, I'm proud to say it. We're not there yet. I'm sorry, we're a little early. However, Shadow Ball, coming from Gengar, have you ever seen such a beautiful Shadow Ball taking out this physically defensive fortress? Now he's got two ones left that are fairy type, and I, I bet you know the rest of this story. Gengar is going to run train choo-choo through his team. And he's going to get those three KOs that Palkia probably could have or should have picked up. Palkia's sacrifice was not made in vain. It did a lot of work this game. It took out a freaking Tentacruel. Which, how, that doesn't happen. How? I, mean, I was really happy. This was 
This was a game where I thought Palkia really shined, and I'm just very happy with its performance. We're going to take out that slur puff. We're not out of this thing yet. We are not out yet. Next week we have a game versus the Astro J, and that's an important one because it's a divisional game. And because if we don't win, we basically have no chance of ever making playoffs in any universe whatsoever. It's 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 tough right now. It is. I, I know that's hard to see a path, but it is still there. It had been narrowing, but it opened up just a little bit this week. I am so happy though. We have the weight of the world off our shoulders with this first dub. Uh, good game to Necro Stevo. I wish you all the best going forward in the rest of your season. Next week, we just gotta go all hands on deck, focus our efforts on defeating Aster, because, like I said, this is among probably our most important game all season due to the importance of maintaining you know, a win streak. We really need to maintain a win streak if we want any hope of becoming second place in our conference. Hopefully we can do it. We'll see you all next week. Peace.